We're the Clements family. We've been full-time RVing for the past four years. Join us on our biggest adventure yet, five months exploring Alaska and Canada. We'll be boondocking, visiting national parks, and soaking up history. In last week's video, we arrived in Alaska and camped by a beautiful lake. However, we ended the week with everybody getting a cold. So we made our way to Fairbanks for some full hookups and a week of relaxing, getting some packages, doing some work around the house, and well, just getting ready for the rest of our summer adventures. That same week, we got a huge surprise. A family we met the previous summer also ended up at the same campground as us, and it would change our summer plans for the best. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Happy birthday. Yay! Happy birthday. Birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, boy. By the time Mark's birthday arrived, we were feeling much better and ready to get out and explore Fairbanks. And our first stop was the Crepery for birthday breakfast. You can choose from sweet, savory, or breakfast crepes made fresh right in front of you. They even had a good selection of hot and cold breakfast beverages. Daddy's having a birthday bellini. How is it? Oh, is it really good? No. Dude, those chives look really good. Dude, How's it taste? The flower looks so cool. Our next stop was the Pioneer Park for the bubbles and music event. By the way, you can boondock in their parking lot for a small fee. Originally opened in 1967 to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Alaska Purchase, the park features historic buildings including log cabins, a schoolhouse, a steam engine. Visitors can also explore these buildings and learn more about the region's history through several museums. The park also has a carousel, a miniature golf course, native village, and narrow gauge train. During the summer, there are several events held on many of the weekends. This particular weekend, there was live music, games, bubbles, and even a petting zoo. Our next stop was North Pole, Alaska, for a date with the big man himself. North Pole, Alaska is a small city known for its festive holiday theme. What, what does Santa have? Look at the badonk on Santa. In the 1950s, a development company purchased the land and renamed it North Pole, hoping to attract a toy manufacturer. While that never happened, the city embraced its holiday theme name and began incorporating Christmas-inspired elements into its identity. Today, the town of North Pole celebrates the spirit of Christmas throughout the year. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. Cha cha cha. Hi, yeah. Happy Hello, birthday. Cool. We ended our day back home with a homemade cake by Kennedy to finish off Mark's birthday celebration. The next day was Father's Day, and we have a tradition in our house that the kids make like a basket or a bag of Mark's favorite things. So he usually gets things like his favorite snacks, maybe favorite drinks, candy. Um, we also gave him a bunch of um, car cleaning supplies because we went and cleaned the car for him. We also make sure to spoil him with his favorite meals throughout the day. I give the kids each a budget and they pick out things from each of them to give to him. It's a fun way for us to celebrate what a great dad he is. So uh, today Mark's off from work and we are going to be doing some sightseeing around Fairbanks. And our first stop is the large animal research station. How excited are you to be here? I'm excited to see muskox. We tried to see them in uh, Tombstone Territorial Park Yeah. Uh, in the Yukon and they were like, you gotta go all the way to like the they'd Arctic already Ocean. Yeah, they'd already gone north. So, so yeah, now so excited. There's a whole field of them over here. Oh, this is located at the University of Alaska Large Research Animal Facility and I'm um, so excited to be here. What does he have? He has a big old boop nose. <laughs> look at look at the boopable nose. Oh my gosh, his nose is the size of my face. The Lars facility is operated by the University of Alaska Fairbanks. 
It serves as a hub for studying and understanding large Alaskan animals, particularly musk oxen and reindeer. The station maintains a herd of reindeer, allowing for research on their behavior, psychology, and even nutritional needs. Because the station houses the only captive research herd of musk oxen in the world, the animals are studied to learn more about biology, reproductive strategies, and adaptation to harsh Arctic environments. Having successful breeding season this year, we were able to see these adorable baby musk oxen. We finished our tour at the education tent where we got to touch and feel different types of animal hides. The special wool that comes from the musk ox, horns, antlers, all kinds of stuff. It's really heavy. You ready, Cooper? Cooper. I got it. <laughs> We all learned what antler velvet felt like and how thick the fur can be on these animals to protect them from the Arctic winters. Our next stop was the privately owned Fountainhead Auto Museum in Fairbanks. And being that it was a little warm out today for Alaska, we were glad for some air conditioning. The museum has a collection of pre-World War II automobiles, including horseless carriages, steam cars, electric vehicles, speedsters, cycle cars, midget racers, and classic 30s models. It is very much a mirror. Get your the docent even let Cooper get into this midget racer. Daddy, Daddy, come here. I think that is just about only your size, though. Oh, Yeah? What do you think? You just got to get into that. I think it's insane and I'm, I'm pretty lucky. Yeah, that was really awesome. The museum also highlights the unique automotive history of Alaska, including vehicles that were adapted for the state's rugged terrain and extreme weather conditions. All of the motor vehicles in the museum, except for two, still run to this day. However, if you ask Kennedy and I, one of the best things about this museum is the clothing. Here you'll find clothing from the same bites. age era as the automobiles, which is really cool. With all the glitter and sequins. Hi, Kenny's very excited about a dress. Yeah. We have been to several museums with automobiles, but this one was by far our favorite. <laughs> oh, cute. Our next stop was dinner and a unique dining experience. Located at the Fairbanks Airport, the restaurant overlooks the runway. They let us move over by the window. It's super cute. They have binoculars hanging up so the kids can borrow them to check out the planes as they come in. This one's about to take off, dude. He's about, he's about to see that plane up in the sky. Cooper, if you have a plane enthusiast in your family, we highly recommend. Our last stop in the evening was Running Reindeer Ranch for one of the most unique experiences that we would have over the summer. An evening with reindeer and local musicians. Oh my gosh. And the band is like, oh my gosh. This is cool. This is more like a Gaga ball field with 15 of them. With chairs in hand, they led everyone into the field right amongst the reindeer. Before heading in, they briefed everybody on safety. We talked about how the reindeer are blowing their coats, and one guy in particular, this guy right here, Toby, who's not really fond of being petted, but he enjoys being around the people. That's dope. 
Running Reindeer Farm offers tours of their farm, reindeer yoga, and during the summer, once a week, the reindeer concert series. I'll put a link to their farm in the description below. During the concert series, you're allowed to bring in food and drinks while enjoying the music and the reindeer. Kennedy had fruit snacks and Nutella in her backpack, and for some reason, this particular oh. deer really thought it smelled good. <laughs> Toby decided we were a pretty chill family, so he hung out with us most of the time. Thank you to the person who posted about this event on the RVing to Alaska forum, because it was something that we will never forget. All right, we are doing a cooking class with Chef Gregory, who apparently was like one of the original chefs with Gordon Ramsay. A, um, a activity from work for launching our mobile app, but this little girl likes to kick, cook and bake, so uh, she's going to be doing all the heavy lifting uh, while I have fun. <laughs> for this event, they gathered all the ingredients and shipped it out to us, even all the way in Alaska. Live instruction was provided to Mark's team over the internet. I personally enjoyed sitting back and watching Mark and Kennedy run all over the kitchen to try and keep up with the uh, chef. Nice plating. <laughs> How is it? How is it? Well, it's good. I missed it. Through 1977. First tanker to carry crude oil from Valdez, 1977. After dinner, we took a little trip out to the Alaska Pipeline to learn more about it. Because of the harsh Alaskan climate, remote location, and concerns about potential environmental impact, we learned why it's laid out in a zigzag formation. We even learned about this funny looking tool here that's called a pig that's used for cleaning uh, and inspecting the interior of the pipeline. One of the reasons we started our Alaska trip in Fairbanks was to attend the Midnight Sun Festival, which kicks off with the Midnight Sun baseball game. This was shockingly our children's first baseball game ever. The game ended about a quarter till one o'clock in the morning, and as you can see, it's still pretty bright outside. All in all, we had like the best time. We didn't get home till about 1.30 in the morning, but we had a great time. Frank's coming back from our Costco run, and what do we spot? At our off-ramp. Yeah. A moose. A moose. A moose. It's like, what are you guys doing? The next day, we decided we were too exhausted to make it to the, any of the Midnight Sun Festival activities downtown, so we did our Costco shopping in preparation for leaving the next day. Like tourists. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and follow us along as we head down to Wasilla to meet some dogs, find a cool camping ground right outside of Anchorage while we explore some museums and cultural centers in the area before driving down the Turnigan Arm to the Kenai Peninsula. And our first stop will be Seward.